let's conclude the part on the accelerated forward backward method by summarizing what we have found so far. Um, so here you basically see uh, all the assumptions I have made and, uh, and the conclusion we got in the last um, video which showed a convergence rate for the gap between the function value at the point at an iteration point xn and the optimal value x bar or f plus g or at x bar. And now we just have to uh, put together all the um, all the assumptions here so that we can actually compute something. But uh, this is rather straightforward. So the the accelerated forward backward algorithm yep. uh, goes as follows. Um, you start with um, some uh, starting point and here the, uh, the particular thing is that you have to have almost like two starting points which start with x0 and xn minus 1. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, x0 and x minus 1. Uh, usually you can just, uh, since you or since you don't know anything about them, you can just uh, choose them like equal in H. And you start with some lambda 0, uh, which is a real number. And usually uh, you can um, I will I will present some 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 choices for the step size. Uh, you can see uh, lambda zero. I mean, what would be straightforward would be like lambda z lambda zero equals zero because then in the first step you you don't really have to, have to uh, take into account the x minus one. Um, so this would be a possible choice. And the step size strategies I will present to you uh, will set. Um, um, well, minus one and, and minus one half, but uh, this is uh, not really an issue. Okay, so this is what we start with. So now we have defined all these quantities um, for for our to 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 kickstart our iteration basically, and then for all n greater or equal than zero, set now y n. Uh, as, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, sorry for that because uh, we can't we can't really do that right now. So, first of all, we have to uh, define this lambda n plus one here. Um, so, choose like lambda n plus one such that um, basically lambda n plus one minus uh, sorry, plus one half uh, absolute value less or equal than uh, the square root of one plus lambda n squared plus one quarter. And this uh, thing on the right hand side will always be positive. Um, and that's important. It's important that this is not minus one because you want to divide by this. So uh, ideally, you would choose lambda n plus 1 uh, strictly greater than minus 1. Uh, okay. Uh, what you can do is you can just take equality in this, in, the, in this first inequality and then you will be fine as long as you start with one of these values. Okay. Um, and then um, then you have lambda zero, you have lambda one by this. So now you can you can start to calculate y n, and y n is x n. So for calculating y zero, you have x zero, great, plus um, lambda n. Uh, you have lambda zero, great. Uh, divided by 1 plus lambda n plus 1. You have just defined lambda 1 uh, for, for the start. And you have to take x n 
x0 check minus x n minus 1 x minus 1 check okay and then you set x n plus 1 as uh, the proximal point uh, with the step size 1 over L, where L is the Lipschitz constant of the gradient of F. And uh, we have discussed why we want that. Um, hopefully you know the Lipschitz constant, otherwise you have to like estimate and maybe, uh, and, uh, I mean it's not the Lipschitz constant, it's just one Lipschitz constant. And if you take a bigger number uh, L, then you will still have a Lipschitz constant which you can plug in here. So no problem with that. Um, as long as you know one Lipschitz constant. That's always a requirement here. Um, and then you can take yn, we have just calculated that, minus 1 over L, gradient of f at yn, okay? And then you can start from the beginning. So then you can, uh, you would basically, I mean the Calculation of lambda n plus one does not require any, any like it, any anything about the the actual problem. So you can you can pre-calculate the sequence of lambda n's, and whenever you calculate you want to calculate y n, you just need the previous x n which you just calculated, uh, or the 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 x n which you just calculated, the step uh, the current lambda n and uh, so the current lambda n and the previous lambda n, basically, and the difference between the last two um, iteration points. Um, that's it. And what we, what we now just have to discuss is, like, choices of the sequence uh, lambda n. Okay, one choice is just... Um, um, take, uh, start with lambda 0 equals minus 1 and then a lambda n plus 1 uh, this with equality. Um, so you take minus 1 half plus a square root of 1 plus lambda n squared plus 1 quarter you see that uh, that then lambda n plus 1 is always bigger than minus 1 half plus 1 half. If you ignore this term, and then you get square root of 1 quarter. Uh, so it's always greater or equal than 0. And uh, it also holds that this is greater or equal than minus 1 half plus square root of 1 plus uh, lambda n squared. So this is 1 plus lambda n. And this is uh, equal to lambda n plus 1 half. Okay, so um, this means that uh, this is um, so the ascent for the lambda n's lambda n uh, lambda n is is um, is increasing with at least uh, one half per step, and this means that um, it's at least uh, you have at least a linear growth. So this means that O of um, one over one plus lambda n squared is at least um, um, O of 1 over n squared. And you can easily check that this is, or it's, it's not at least, it's at most 1 over n squared. So you can easily check that the 1 over n squared uh, convergence rate holds, uh, which, we, um, which we want here. Uh, okay, that's the first choice of the sequence of this sequence, and the se second choice, um, the second choice is you can just take lambda n um, 
not not here here it's defined by re, re, by a recursion uh, you can but you can also find an explicit choice which is just slightly suboptimal but yeah who cares um, but with, but it, it will also give you the one over n squared convergence rate so uh, this is you can choose lambda n equals um, uh, one half n minus one and as I said if you start with uh, minus one uh, the, in the first choice you start with lambda zero equals minus one in the second you start with lambda zero equals minus one half and so this is for all n greater or equal than zero and then of course this is also um, this o of one over one plus lambda n squared so lambda n also grows linearly so this is also o of one over n squared and you can even calculate the uh, lambda n lambda n over um, this uh, one uh, over lambda n uh, one plus lambda n plus one explicitly and this will be um, one half uh, n minus one over one plus uh, one half uh, uh, sorry one half um, the lambda n plus one is of course uh, one half n so uh, this and if you if you just uh, write this explicitly then you get uh, one half n or if you multiply with two uh, then you get one uh, then you get n minus 1 over n plus 2. So this is what you would insert here for uh, in the algorithm for the second step size choice. So then uh, you don't have any, any sequence lambda n um, anymore, but you just take the, the iteration number here. Okay, so both of these choices give you a convergence rate of O of 1 over n squared for the for the gap here and this is obviously um, a lot better than the the o of uh, 1 over n which we got for the forward backward algorithm and um, practical experience also shows that um, the convergence rate in practice is much better for the accelerated forward backward method than it is for the normal forward backward method and with this i want to conclude the uh, section on the on the methods for um, a sum of a convex differentiable uh, function with Lipschitz gradient and a proper convex lower semi-continuous function.